This week I learned I still really, really, really do not like short stories. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are here to close down pretty much the month of July. Last weekly update for the month, guys. Been kind of an interesting week, kind of a shortened one, but I did want to get these weekly updates back on Friday. So I've had some couple things I've kind of knocked that off the schedule twice now, trying to get these back on Fridays because, uh, I don't know, I'm just a, a creature of habit in that regard. I like to follow a routine. I am very much a, a routine kind of guy. So uh, let's go ahead and do that, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about what am I reading. I did finish... Rose Matter by Stephen King. So it uh, looks like we'll be getting back into the multiverse uh, in August sometime. I think that'll be the book we'll be talking about there. But uh, with this one, guys, it, uh, it well, I think it's good. Look, here's the thing. is I, I feel like this is an underrated book because I don't think I hear any King fans ever talk about this book, like ever. And uh, the thing with it is, is it feels almost like two books kind of smashed together a little bit. Because it's like the first half, you think you're just getting like a domestic abuse on the run kind of story. You know, trying to hide from your abusive spouse kind of thing. And then it goes completely fantastical. Like in a way that I barely remember. It almost feels like Stephen King was in the middle of writing this book. And he was watching History Channel one night. And they had a documentary about, you know, the, the, the labyrinth of the Minotaur in Crete. Or something like that. And he said, hmm, how do I write that into my story? So that's what it feels like. Now, look, it's good. It's just very strange. Very, very strange. So uh, it's strange in that way that we like when Stephen King gets kind of weird. It just it feels weird that it almost does feel like two different stories. He decided to kind of smash them together. So I don't know if that's, uh, you know, he has said he's kind of like this, lets the story take him there. He doesn't know where he's going to end it sometimes. I wonder if that was the case with this one. Was it originally meant to kind of be a throwback to Greek mythology at all or what in there but uh very it's good guys it's very good like i said probably a little tough to read if you've ever been in an abusive relationship but uh again i i think it is very well written and i think that uh we read stephen king because he will make you uncomfortable you know that is one of the things that he can do well and not try to glorify anything uh he really does just put it into uh you know how it would feel in real life because his characters are really great and rosie really really good character uh, i liked her quite a bit but guys, uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. I'll talk more at it in length because there are quite a few multiverse connections that we're going to talk about uh, when we get into that. Uh, what else? I did the digital one this week. I did uh, The Law, which is the new novella from uh, Jim Butcher for The Dresden Files. It takes place after Battleground, so it's the most recent part of the timeline. And it's kind of what I joked about in the cold open there is that I really, really hate short stories. The reason for this is because I've talked about this with Stevie King's short stories before. The reason I don't really like them is because right when they get going, they end. Now, this is called a novella because it is about 100 pages. Uh, but guys, it's 100 pages of a Dresden Files book is like that. It's like with this, I was reading it and I was like, oh, man, I'm so glad. I just started reading it over my lunch break. I'm so glad to be back in this world. 30 minutes later, I'm like, what do you mean I'm like 52% done? <laughs> you know? So, you know, I finished it in two sittings. Uh, it probably would have been one if I wasn't at work, you know. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good, guys. I, I will just say that I don't know if uh, Harry Dresden being in an episode of Law & Order was exactly what I wanted. But there are many, many things that I did like about it. And uh, uh, I'll be talking about that somewhere else. I'll get into it here in a minute about where I'll be talking to that story a little more in depth here recently maybe with some some spoilers to boot but uh with me guys uh this week and really after i finished rose and matter i did uh, just kind of buckle down that because there were some people that turns out did want to read along with me so i figured i'd give them a chance to catch up on my reread of a game of thrones now uh if you missed it last week this was just kind of an impromptu thing this awesome folio this is volume two of that because it is two books for the first book uh, in the folio society edition here um i just started kind of thumbing through this because i thought it was just gorgeous and the next thing i know i would read read 50 pages so i decided i was going to keep going and guys it's awesome it's magnificent i mean i don't think that anyone has ever really said anything about the books outside of one they're not finished and they start or they start whining about the television show uh, with me guys this is a five-star read you know i don't hand out five-star reads very often uh, I think all five books in the series are magnificent. And I decided with this, you know what? I'm done whining about the series not being complete. And I'm going to go back and enjoy this world that I love oh so much. And guys, this is probably my sixth or seventh reread of the first book in this series. 
and I'm picking up things on this reread that I totally had forgotten about. And here's the thing. It's been 11 years since my last reread of this. And I think I had gotten kind of to the point because I had rewatched the show a couple times is I felt like maybe there were some things I was disassociating. What was happening in the book and what happened on the show? You know, so this has helped me kind of correct some of those things. So I, I am really enjoying that along with, uh, with the rewatch, which I'll talk about in TV and movie talk. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoying this. I I'm glad I'm just talking with some people that are reading it for the first time. So, so fun. Uh, one person has never watched the show and has never read the book. So that's obviously a lot of fun. And then someone who had watched the show but never read the books, which still... They were really, really excited about it on the Discord, saying how they, you know, they really didn't think that they needed to read this after watching the show, and they're saying like it's it's just so much better. And like, yes, guys, books are always better than movies and TV, right? But uh, yeah, this, and if you can afford the change, guys, uh, the Folio Society edition, this is amazing. I'd I'd love to have the rest, <laughs> but uh, shipped, they're about three hundred bucks each to the state. So uh, I think I'm just going to kind of deal with this, and then I'm going to go back to my regular old illustrated or original hardcovers of you know, the song of ice and fire, but I'm very much enjoying this trip, uh, revisiting Westeros and remembering why I love this world so, so much. And, uh, yeah, television show be damn guys. It's an amazing, amazing book series. And, uh, I hope you will give it a shot regardless of it not being finished. It's just that good. So let's get into what am I going to read? Now, obviously I'm going to finish a game of Thrones. You can see here, this is the second volume. I think overall about 75% done, I would guess. Uh, cause, uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to talk about exactly where I am in case you are one of those few people left in the world who weren't spoiled by the TV show or haven't read the books yet. But uh, yeah, I'm just saying I know the story well enough at this point to feel like I know I'm about three quarters done. So I'll probably finish that up before I start Jade Legacy, guys. I don't have a copy of that yet because I'm waiting till the September is when the trade paperback that matches my other two trade paperbacks comes out. And I'll be picking that up. But I have it on digital, so I'm going to read it on digital because, guys, I am going to be talking to Fonda Lee in September. So I want to make sure I finish this and uh, also Jade Setter of Jean Loon by the time uh, I talk to her because it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. But with Jade Legacy, guys, I just I can't wait. She set up everything so well. I can't wait to see how she pays it all, especially since everyone says Jade Legacy is the best. So I'm going to be starting that as soon as I finish A Game of Thrones, which I don't imagine will be much longer than this weekend. So this time next week, I'll probably have some things to say about Jade Legacy. I'm very excited to do it. Uh, after that, guys, because of reading uh, the Green Bone Saga, I have been like, you know what? This makes me think of The Godfather so much. Godfather is one of my favorite movies ever, but I've never read the book. So after I finish that, I'm probably going to read The Godfather. And I say probably because I don't know. Once you get this Westeros itch, guys, it's hard for me not to pick up the next book. So uh, I would like to read Jay Legacy and The Godfather uh, before I get into Clash of Kings. But, you know, who knows? Who knows what these, these things can just kind of go have. The thing is, is my schedule is pretty open at this point. Uh, we are going to be starting doing those uh, those Durfee books here, uh, which I've never actually done. I'm very excited to do. And uh, we'll be starting those August, September, and then taking a month off for October and then finishing up with a new book in November. So uh, really, that's that's really all I got for pretty much the month of August, you know, at this point. Keep reading Ship of Theseus, which I touched on last week. But uh, yeah, uh, The Godfather, though, it's... Again, it's a movie that I could put on pause and recite the music, the the dialogue, all of it <laughs> myself. It might be quite annoying, but you know, ask my wife. But um, it's 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 a great movie, and if the book's even half as good, and I just said, you know, the books are always better than the movie. So if that's the case, I'm in for quite a ride. But I can't wait to finally dig into that. Got both of those on digital, so I'm gonna be uh, taking my Kindle with me pretty much everywhere the next couple of weeks. It's gonna be a great great time. Let's talk about this week on the channel, though, guys, because I got that Westeros bug. I, I only put out a couple videos this week, so it's a pretty slow week on the channel. Uh, and I spent the rest of my free time kind of reading, and, you know, work's been kind of busy, uh, as it does. I'm starting to get caught up after that vacation, finally, you know, third week after vacation, I'm finally starting to get caught up. But, you know, I got every other Friday off, so, you know, the short work week. You basically do five days of work in four days. But, uh, besides, no one wants to hear about that, but, uh, yeah, pretty slow week on the channel, so I only got a couple out. Red Rising, uh, we did get that announcement for book six and seven, so I want to talk about that, because it did have this big plan about how to do a reread and a retrospective leading up to the release of the last book in May. And then he threw us that curveball that, oh, by the way, there's going to be a book seven. So a lot of people were curious, you know, are you still going to be doing that? So yes, we're still going to be doing it, guys. I'm going to do it all the way up to the release of Lightbringer in May. And uh, then we'll just, you know, when the, the the second that Red God comes out, guys, we'll, we'll do that too. So uh, I did want to put out that, that read-along schedule in case anybody hasn't read it or wants to reread it with me. 
wants to do it. So I did kind of get that. The ball rolling have had a lot of interest. That's that's, that's kind of a that, that's heartening to me because uh, it's it's. Whenever I talk about Red Rising, this channel doesn't really move the needle very much, but decent interest and decent traffic on that video. So uh, I'm excited if there's more people that are going to get interested in Red Rising now. So uh, it's you know we're going to be doing the first trilogy in January through February because those are kind of shorter, and then March we'll do uh, what Iron Gold. April we'll do Dark Age, and then May of course is Lightbringer, and I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait to dive back in this series because I feel like it's one of those things I read so fast. I forgot a ton, probably. So it's going to be quite fun going back to it and seeing. I bet I, I bet I enjoy the first book a lot more this go around since you know I feel like I I love those characters a lot more now than I did that first read. But anytime I can get more people into Red Rising, that's what it's all about. You know, I just want more people to experience that world that I that I love so much. And those characters, I just want to hang out with those characters again. Cannot wait. Plus, whenever you read several lines, you start in day, you just kind of inject those into your daily your daily vocabulary, your daily dialogue. So uh, yeah, hopefully I don't get fired at work for you know quoting Severo more than once. And then I continue my re review of the first law series with Before They Are Hanged. It's a little late, but you know, uh, it, it is what it is. But uh, hey, better late than never. But I, I think you can see in my enthusiasm for that video, in that video, that for that series, I still do have. I still am very, very enthused about that series. You know, it's kind of crazy to think I've only read it, the original trilogy, twice because I, I feel like I could probably pick it up again and read it tomorrow. And I think that's one of those series that, like, as soon as you finish Last Argument Kings, you could start back over on Blade itself because there's so much to dive into. But uh, yeah, great, great series. And of course, Before They Are Hanged, a book that I actually think. With that original trilogy, it's it's one of those that bucks that trend of middle book syndrome. It is not a problem with this series. I feel like Before They Are Hanged is better than Blade itself, which I love. So that tells you how much I dug that book. So it was exciting to go back and talk about it because, like I've said in that video, I've always kind of read it as a trilogy, you know, back to back to back. So it's hard for me to kind of sit down and play like, okay, what happened in this book, this book, and this book? So going back there and making sure I didn't go past the events of that book and talk about what happens in Last Argument Kings. Uh, even for a spoiler-free video, it was, it was a lot of fun to kind of dig into. But uh, I hope you guys will check out that series if you haven't. I'll be doing the Last Argument of Kings review next month, and then we'll wrap that up. Might have a little something extra special if people are wanting it. I was thinking about doing a video about uh, a question that I get a lot is, should I read the First Law Standalones? Well, I was thinking about doing a video about that. But it'll kind of depend if people are wanting more Red Rising stuff or not. Uh, not on my channel, but over on iWizard, uh, Jordan invited me and Scott, the bald booktuber, on to talk some Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, which we just read last, or this month, actually. So uh, it didn't do the, the spoiler talk on my channel, but we had one over there on his channel. I will link it below for you guys to check out. But uh, always a great time to talk to those two gentlemen. And guys, look, here's a little thing about it. Is I could talk Song of Ice and Fire all day. It's not a problem for me. So uh, anybody wants to talk about Song of Ice Fire, give me a shout. I will probably make time to talk to you about it. So it's always a lot of fun joining them, gentlemen. And uh, then, of course, talking about one of my favorite fantasy things in the world. One of my favorite worlds ever created. So a, a lot of fun there. And uh, look for my Fire and Blood actual review sometime in August leading up to House of the Dragon. Let's talk about a little next week plans, guys. I know I said I was going to get out that Two Towers review this month. Well... Honestly, my Tolkien stuff, people aren't exactly like you know clamoring for. They're like, oh my god, where? When is it? When is it? So uh, I, I didn't feel bad about moving it ahead to next week. So I will be doing my two towers. We don't like to do two reviews in a week anymore because reviews really don't get much traffic like they used to, which I find weird with a channel called Mike's Book Reviews. But again, I like to give the people what they want. But it will be happening next week. We'll be talking about the two towers, the middle book of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And talk about there's any middle book syndrome there? Hmm, lots of things to talk about with the two towers, some of the narrative decisions that Mr. Tolkien makes. I think we could have quite a fun talk. Because I always feel like the first book in a series, I could just basically I'm telling you why I think that you'll like it. When you get into the sequels, I get to talk about some of the events that actually did happen in the book, you know? So even in a spoiler-free review, you can find ways to do that. Then I'll be wrapping up the month of June with my uh, wrap-up and, of course, my book of the month. Actually going to be Slim Pickens this month because, uh, well, I, I bailed on a couple of books and and I, I, a couple of them are rereads. Uh, so it's actually going to be kind of an easy pick for a change this month. I've already decided what it's going to be, but uh, you'll have to tune in if you want to find out what that book is. And then, guys, next Thursday is my birthday. It is my big old 44th birthday 
which my kids are just like excited about because 44 is a cool number, according to them. I'm like, well, not to me. But anyway, uh, so I decided I found this thing online about a birthday book tag. Now, I know no one tagged me, but I was like, when else am I going to do it? You know, so birthday book tag sounds like fun. I'll get that out next Thursday on my birthday because I think it's a, some really neat questions I, I, I'm already kind of noodling about. You know, I like to usually do those live because I don't like to sit there and think about it for a while. But I also realize probably no one wants to see Thursday and you go, I'm not sure, you know. So I, I did actually look at those beforehand. I'm going to kind of think about some of those answers before I get to it. And then, guys, on Saturday, as in tomorrow, the 29th, we will be doing Saturday Night Night's Three. This is going to be our live conversation. It's going to be 6 p.m. Houston time. Use timeanddate.com if you want to find out what time that is where you are. But I will be having three guests again. Of course, I'm going to have Jolene from Jolene Reads, Steve from Steve Talks Books, and Thomas from SFF 180, Sci-Fi Fantasy 180. I will link all of those channels down below for you to find them. Awesome people, and I think it's a very, very eclectic mix, you know. So I have no idea where this conversation is going to take us, but I'm excited to find out. That, uh, and especially, uh, you got to think in advance. I got to thank Yolene for for she's in a very, very different time zone than me, guys. So she's basically going to be staying up all night to talk to us. So uh, I want to say thank you in advance for for making that sacrifice to talk some books with us. It's going to be a great time, and uh, we might talk about more than books. Who knows? That's what. Uh, that's what Saturday Night Nights d dictates. We might just talk about anything at all. I mean, hell, we had Alan on there one time and he talked about, we talked about education for 30 minutes. So anything is on the table, right, guys? And uh, for another guest spot, I will be joining the Dresden Files podcast tomorrow to talk some spoilers about the law. Now, I'll be the least knowledgeable person on there because uh, those fine, fine people over there, are they are an encyclopedia when it comes to the Dresden Files. They'll talk about stuff, I'll be like, I don't remember that. You know, I've read the series once. I read it really fast. So some things kind of, you know, have bled together since I finished the series. Uh, but uh, I, I'm always excited whenever they invite me to come on. I think it'll be my third time going on their channel. Uh, but I, I love talking with them. Super, super awesome people. I hope you, if you are a Dresden Files fan and you haven't subscribed to their podcast on, on iTunes or Spotify, any of that stuff, please do. They're really, really awesome. And I'm excited to uh, to talk about to talk about the law with them and kind of see the things that they're going to make me realize that I totally missed in a hundred page short story because they're just that awesome. I can't wait to talk to them. So that'll be happening uh, tomorrow morning. That's the 29th also. I don't know if they put those up live or not, but I'll link their channel, of course, down below. And uh, if they are, then you can uh, you know, watch me make a fool of myself live. I can't wait, right? Before I go, guys, let's talk about some TV and movie talk. There are a couple things I do want to talk about. Uh, so my rewatch begins. Uh, so what I said I wanted to do is I wanted to reread each Game of Thrones book or a Game of or a Song of Ice and Fire book. It's hard not to call it Game of Thrones now. It really is. Anyway, especially because we're talking about Game of Thrones. As I said, I want to reread each Song of Ice and Fire book and then watch the corresponding season and see what changes are made. Now, uh, this is my first time revisiting uh, the first season of Game of Thrones in a long time. The thing was, like back when it first came out, I was writing for a media outlet. I always say it ended badly, so I don't want to give them free press by saying their name. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, I wrote about it, so I actually watched each of these episodes like three times, and I remembered how faithful it was when I was doing it. But going back again, like good lord, watching this immediately after reading it, it's like a lot of the dialogue is like literally word from word from the book. So as much grief as we all give Dan and Dave when it came to a literal adaptation, they were quite good. They were quite good when they had source material, and I felt like the stuff that they added was really good. Like you got Littlefinger and Varys, like having like the scene where they're like trying to one up each other that doesn't happen in the book. Really, really good. Some scenes with uh, with Robert and Cersei are really good that aren't in the book. There's one scene with Catelyn and Cersei that's not in the book that's really, really good. But as far as everything that is adapted, I thought going back and watching this first season after you know after it was because it wasn't a runaway success until about like season four, guys. It really was. That's when they started throwing in some serious money behind it. I thought going back and watching it, it was going to feel really low budget, but it doesn't. It feels pretty good. Now, there are some things where it's like, okay, yeah, that, that doesn't look that great. You know, uh, the Dothraki Horde, you know, there's 100,000 of them, but it looks like there's about 14 people there. You know, uh, the tournament, uh, uh, you know, the tournament of the hand, it looks like there's about, it looks like a high school pep rally, basically. You know, so there's little things you could tell they were restricted on budget, but still, again, uh, one of the best little adaptations I've seen. I put it on par with like Fellowship of the Ring, not in production value, but as far as like faithfulness to the source. Yeah, there's some things reduced. There's some characters taken out, but it's still damn near perfect as far as like what you could do on television. I'm very quite impressed 
going back and watching it this way. So uh, I, I want to watch past where I'm at in the book. Uh, so I think I just finished episode five before I recorded this. And uh, yeah, that's where uh, uh, Jamie and, and Ned have a little confrontation outside of Littlefinger's brothel. I don't think that's any spoilery. Uh, but anyway, if you haven't watched that by now, guys, I'm sorry, you know, but it is what it is. But uh, it's really fun doing it this way. I'm really excited to keep doing it this way because I think uh, the best thing about that is once I run out of books, I can stop watching the show before they enter fan fiction territory because we know what happened when that happened. How about a little WWE Vince McMahon retired? Now, I don't want to get into all of the rumors and stuff. Let's just say uh, he got in some trouble, I, I believe, because I always said Vince was going to be the from my cold dead hand type. I really did. I honestly didn't. I, I, I wondered if like he was going to outlive me, basically. He was still going to be doing this when, when I passed away. But uh, yeah, him actually relinquishing control. And I was like, ah, well, let's see. Is it really like a, a retirement? Or is it like a retirement where he's like off screen, but he's still running? His, no, no. Triple H is now in control of, uh, or Paul Levesque, if you want to, if you want to, you kind of break character here. He's going to be a uh, full control of of creative. Uh, so, here's what I think is going to happen. We've always said, okay, nothing's going to change until Vince steps down. Okay, so that's happened now. And I think that a lot of people are like, they watched Raw the other night, like, all right, what nothing different? Look, it's going to take time. It's going to take some time. Here's what I think is going to happen. I feel like there's going to be a lot of. Vince's old yes men that are still in place there that aren't going to want to change. You're going to be like, we've been doing it this way for 40 years. I don't want to change. So there's going to have to be a culling. It's going to take some time. There's going to have to be some uh, mutual uh, agreements to separate, basically. And I would not I would say probably around like January or so of 2023, I wouldn't be shocked to see if WWE just kind of did like a complete rebranding, a rebranding, a whole new, like a new logo, a new theme song, a new look for everything, everything to kind of be fair. I'm not talking about like a soft reboot. I'm just saying a whole image change, like when they went from like the Attitude Era to the Ruthless Aggression Era, how it kind of changed aesthetic a little bit. I think it'll kind of be like that. We will get a new era. And uh, look, I, I mean, I'm optimistic because I do think that Hunter did a good job of listening to what the people wanted he was always really good at that when he ran nxt so but again this is the big stage now you know sure you can perform in triple a how do you do when you get to the majors that's the kind of thing so we've always said for years i feel like people have always wanted to credit triple h when something was good on wwe and they wanted to criticize vince when something was bad on wwe well now it's time to find out there's gonna be no more excuses so uh, I'm excited for what the future holds. I don't think at this point in my life I'll ever be a weekly watcher again unless like my kids really got into it and we watched weekly. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But, you know, hey, that would be about the only way I ever did it. But, uh, you know, for the future of the uh, sport, the entertainment, whatever you want to call it, I, I would be lovely to actually watch it and not just be in pain like I have been for the last 15 years, you know? So, uh, you know, optimism is, is high right now for that, but uh, I'm still stunned. I did not think that Vince would ever do it, so I've got to think he really, really stepped in it this time in his personal life. So, guys, that's pretty much my week. What did your week look like? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know what you're up to. What are you reading, guys? What are you watching? What are you listening? What are you playing? I'd love to hear about it. Drop in the comments and let me know, and I will talk to you there.